Hello and welcome to this video on the Hansa Castle Lighthouse. This will be everything you need to know on how to get the most out of the lighthouse, why it's important to do now, and some final tips that everyone can use. This will be quite a long video, so make sure you're comfortable and ready to hear something new. I will also be announcing the winner of my pet giveaway in this video and handing it out, and checking out who's won this week's diamond giveaway at the end of the video. If you didn't know I did diamond giveaways, then stay till the very end and I'll explain how you can join them every single week. So within this video, we will be covering these main topics. What the lighthouse is used for, how you can earn the most from it, and should you even be bothered about it, with some very useful tips at the end. You can skip to any of these times if you like, but everything is going to be useful to know. I'm going to try and cover everything as possible about the lighthouse that some people aren't even talking about, but if I miss something, make sure you leave a comment down below, as it might just help someone out who comes across this video. So what do we need to know about the lighthouse? Well for starters, this is now another place you get to improve your squad. You fight battles, earn lanterns, and eventually earn lighthouse chests that have these elixirs in them to improve your team. Elixirs are essentially like gems that you can put onto your squad, but they don't take up any slots and they improve your fighter rather than the items they hold. Elixir points can stack up a lot over time, but they come in much smaller numbers. For example, I've already added 2200 health points to my Darkula, but I can add another 3000 points on top of that already. So this will take a lot of time and effort, but it will certainly be worth it in the long run. Elixirs come in a standard range you can expect just like items, from grey commons, green uncommons, all the way up into ancients. And the standard way of earning these elixirs will be earning them through the lighthouse chest in the top right. You can earn a chest or chest after every 200 points, and from what I can tell, you can do this endlessly. Depending on your throne room level, the chest you receive will be of a lower quality, and sometimes less quantity too. So the more diamonds you have, the more you can earn in one day. The only unfortunate thing is that it will reset daily. So if you're close to the next chest, it could be worth spending some diamonds just to reset your energy to earn the next chest. And don't worry, anything you don't collect from the lighthouse after the time is reset, you'll see it'll be sent in the mail to you, so you don't need to worry about losing them. So how can we earn as many chests as possible? Well, you're given five people to fight, and you will always be given one easy person and one hard person to fight. The rest will be around your squad power. Depending on the squad power of the people you're fighting compared to your own is how many lanterns you can earn per fight. Now, you can actually trick the system here. You can remove a couple of your fighters to improve the lanterns you can get back, at the possible cost of losing of course, but I thought this was worth mentioning as it might work for some people. This could earn you more in the long run if done properly, but that's up to you on how you do this. I would just recommend that you only do it on the weakest person, but again, that's up to you. You also earn bonus rewards for winning 3 total fights, and then 5 total fights. You obviously earn way more for completing all 5 fights, but sometimes that's not always possible. If you think you can beat everyone, or are happy to reset what you have after 3 fights, you can press the update button to reset all 5 people. Just bear in mind, this will also reset your 3 or 5 total fight bonuses, as it only applies to the people on that page. What I would recommend to people would be to do the 3 weakest people you can fight, and then if you win those, then attack the strongest person. Because if you lose against the strongest, you might as well have not fought the 4th person anyway, and you could have saved the extra energy onto the next page. And this way you can still get at least your 3 total wins for the extra bonus. Now I will have tips later on on how you can win more of your fights, and be better prepared for it. But for now, if you're liking the video, make sure you leave a like to show me that you're enjoying it, and get subscribed for the next video I do, which is planning on being a very big one that everyone can benefit from and you won't want to miss it. And separately, if you're interested in being able to also stream and record the latest games like I do, I have some links to all the gear that I use down below that will help you in your journey and it's up to you if you want to check them out. So back to the video, apart from the daily system, what's the ranking system all about? Well it's got the core functionality of how you earn lanterns as normal, but then it puts them on a leaderboard between you and 9 other people. This basically guarantees you a chest, but I'm sure in the future that they will add more people to the leaderboards per ranking session to make it more competitive. And in general, the bottom chest isn't something you want to be aiming for. These chests from 6th place and above will certainly earn you way more elixirs than you could be earning throughout the day just on these normal chests in the top right. So I'd always make sure that you can at least get 6th place or above whenever this comes around. If you do get the chance, always push yourself to make top 3, because every chest you go up from can earn you some serious amount of elixirs just by going up one ranking. I'm sure these chests will be different for lower frame room levels in terms of rarity, but the quantities you receive will be substantial anyway. Rankings come around every Tuesday at midnight UTC, as it says here in the top left, and it lasts 48 hours. So within these two days, always make sure about to earn what you can. 
On my first run, I was able to earn second place with 1,878 lanterns. Now with this, I didn't use any diamonds to refresh my energy or refresh my opponents, so this is what you could earn if you can just spend enough time on the game and are able to make the use of your energy when you have it. And like I said before, earning top three places really do earn you a hell of a lot of elixirs, so let me show you what I got from opening these chests. As you can see, there's a lot to look at, and I even got one ancient spell power, quite a lot of legendaries, but a lot of purples, lots of blues, and green elixirs. And that's all before opening my normal daily chest that I was receiving throughout the day as well. I will have some tips in the end of what you should be doing if you don't have a lot of time, but we still have a little bit more to talk about before we get there. As of the time of when you're seeing this video, adding elixirs don't change your squad power. I can prove this by adding dodge to any one of my fighters, and as you can see, my fighter called Fake Tank has the number 349 at the end of his fighter's power. When I add dodge to his stats and let him drink it, his power hasn't gone up, but his dodge has. So for now, this can make your team very strong versus others who haven't started earning elixirs without increasing your power. So make the most out of it and earn what you can before an update that should eventually come out and fix that. Here's the only alternative to giving yourself a boost before the next fix or update. You can buy elixirs from the store. Now, I personally would recommend doing this for a quick boost because I'm a fan of using gems for my squad. But if you're not, then you might not want to do this in case it increases your power in the coming weeks or months when they eventually fix it. But if you do buy some from the store, this will surely help you in earning better rewards the next time the rankings come around, and it could land you in the top 3 spot because of it, so this is definitely something to think about. So when we think about it, is the lighthouse or elixirs really worth doing when you take the game into perspective? And the answer is yes. Whether you do it because you want to earn top spot in the rankings, or just be better at the throne room level you want to be at, using elixirs are going to be a part of the future, and not doing them at all can really make you fall behind in the long run. Even if you don't like using gems or only use ancients, you can still do the lighthouse and only add spell power to the dino wand or add damage to your dragonborn and that's it, but either way it benefits everyone, and more so in my opinion than the journey. So how often should you be doing the lighthouse? In my opinion, you should be doing this every single time you pop on and at least use up your 5 attacks. They fill up to the maximum every hour and don't take that long to do. But if you don't have the time or don't care about it so much, still do your absolute best to be on during Tuesday and Wednesday while the rankings are going on. The amount of elixirs you can earn during the rankings will give you a huge boost to your team weekly. You might be unsure whether to do the lighthouse or gem bait as they both help in similar ways and both cost a lot of mana. But I find the lighthouse is still going to be as important if not a bit more. This is especially true for people who already have a team with full purples or legendaries, the gem bay doesn't really help you a lot in improving your gems, except by using it for dust. As a balanced approach for newer players or weaker players, try and do your gem base throughout the week, except on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then focus on the lighthouse on those days. This way you'll still earn purple gems and earn the major part of elixirs at the same time without too much compromise. Just before we cover the tips, let's talk about what are the new attributes and what are they going to be useful for. I added all of them to my chef when I brought my first chest, so I could see what I can get from them, but I didn't want to add it to my main squad because I would see that as cheating. The first new attribute is going to be Fortitude. This reduces the chance of an enemy fighter to inflict critical damage. The second is Accuracy, and this reduces the chance of an enemy fighter to dodge an attack. Then we have Pierce, which reduces the effectiveness of physical armor of the attacked target. And then lastly we have Magic Pierce, reduces the effectiveness of the attacked target's magic armor. These are all the new attributes you can be seeing on your fighters in the near future and can all have some great benefits. I don't know if there's a special algorithm or it's just a pure simple subtract of what the enemy has and counters it, but you can sure this would be very important to your team if you're planning to play the game for a long time. There is one thing we can't talk about yet and that's specializations and that's something I'm very interested in about. So if you want to see me cover this in great detail when it comes out, make sure again you get subscribed for a future video. Now, let's talk about these tips and what information I can give you that others might not be able to. So firstly for my tips, the first major thing you're going to want to do is upgrade your mana well and laboratory. I know the very first tip I give isn't even on the lighthouse, but it's very important. Whether you're just general gaming between this, gem bays, clan bosses or PvPs, you're going to need a lot of mana to do well in the lighthouse. And that's not to mention before the ranking leaderboards are active, and you might be spending even more time at the lighthouse. It also costs a lot of mana adding elixirs to your squad when you have a lot of them built up, so I'd recommend not upgrading your people during the time of doing the ranking leaderboards to help maintain your mana levels. The second tip is to only watch your adverts on fights where you've used spells and ideally fights where you've used more than one. By watching an advert after a loss, you gain your energy back and the spells you use. 
So use them sparingly and only use them on the fights where you actually used a lot of spells to make the most out of using these adverts. The third tip, have two attacks completed or ideally four before the next reset, continuing to the next day. This will mean if you're able to win your next fight after the reset, you immediately gain the bonus rewards to completing so many fights in total. The next tip would be upgrade your magic lab and spells, mainly the cliff's totem and line spirit. I find if you use these in combination and starting with the cliff totem, it can have some great benefits to your team. To be better at the lighthouse, you'll also need to have a better hero. Now, you can argue that this will find you harder opponents, and you're certainly right, but by upgrading the right stuff can help you with winning. There are many different things to avoid upgrading straight away, as they don't provide much benefit to your squad and unfortunately increase your squad power. For example, Porcupine, Demolitionist and Wild Magic to name a few. They all provide a benefit, but not as much as what others can do, so just don't focus on these weaker ones first. Another, as I've mentioned before, it can be worth spending your diamonds paying for elixirs and the store. They can give you a nice amount for what you pay, but this will be more for people who have a lot of diamonds spare. The last major tip would be, you should buy extra attacks by resetting your energy when the ranking leaderboards are out, and mainly if it will help you get in the top 3. As I've mentioned before, this is a big step up when entering in the top 3 from places 4th to 6th. Now these next bits aren't really tips, but are still worth mentioning if you didn't know about these. Every stat you level up through elixirs will eventually hit a max level. I don't know what it is for throne room 7 or above, but I have found some information online that shows you you will be hitting some limits. Don't be worried though, these limits are quite high and if you max them out on one person, you'll still have the rest of your team to work with anyway. When it comes to resetting your energy, once you pay for diamonds to gain energy back, it will put the timer back to the 20 minute timer. And then from here it will cost 6 diamonds again to refresh until the timer goes down. This doesn't help so much, but it's just another bit of information. Another thing, you now have a personal daily quest to do with elixirs. So when it comes to doing your jack of all trades, you will need to take doing the lighthouse into some account. When it comes to adding elixirs, make sure you add it to not only someone in your starting lineup, but also to someone who is definitely going to stay in your starting lineup, otherwise all this extra grinding could be a waste to an extent. For anyone here for this part of the video, we are now at the end, and again, leave a like if you've learned something new, and be ready for next week's video, as again, I'm looking to target everyone with some great information, so get subscribed to not miss out. For the giveaways, let's start off with the pet giveaway, and just like my diamond giveaway, I'm going to pick someone at random, and then additionally use the wheel of names to decide which pet you will be getting. And for anyone wondering the three digits to the frequency number of the question, the answer was 140, so well done to everyone that actually got that part right. So well done to Oscar for winning this pet giveaway, let's have a look at what pet you'll be getting and then send it over very shortly. So now let's use the wheel of names and find out what you've won. Right here let's spin the wheel and we have four choices here. And there you go, you got the Labrador, so nicely done. I'll be sending that over to you right now. So there's your account, I hope you typed in your ID correctly because this person will be receiving the Labrador. So again, nicely done for winning and if you want to be a part of these pet giveaways in the future, make sure you follow me over on Twitter to keep up to date on when I actually release the next one. Moving on to the diamond giveaway, for anyone new to the channel, you can enter the diamond giveaways by clicking the Gleam link in the description. All you need to do is enter your in-game ID and then that's it, you've entered. Then you have the chance of winning 250 diamonds and you can do this every single week. So let's see who won in this week's giveaway and as normal, I'll be making sure all sensitive information is blurred out. So well done to everyone that won, the next giveaway will be live now and you can join that down below and good luck to everyone that enters. And if you haven't already because of the giveaway, why not check out my Dying Light series I started a while back. There's plenty of great videos out there already and once you get to the part where you see us playing together in co-op, we've become quite the handful for each other and it's going to be great fun to watch. Thank you.